but this is the app that we use here in the data center to be able to aggregate data coming from Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And interestingly enough, we saw a while ago the surveys where we also saw what the concerns are for the people who did vote, or at least based on the survey on the survey questions, wherein the top three involved the consumer goods prices, corruption, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so. But here, we're going to see something completely different. This could show us just how different things could be over on social media and the numbers we see on the survey. Over here on social media, in the past seven days, this is very re uh, react reactory, wherein there is a lot of reaction with the latest news. We see here the top discussed issue is not actually corruption, it's not consumer goods prices, but the concern regarding the religious vote, especially last week when we started hearing about the religious block voting that could happen or could not happen in this upcoming elections. And interesting to note, number two on the last Pulse, Pulse Asia survey was the cor issue on corruption, and yet here we have them near the bottom at, in terms of the concerns of people on, were on social media as well as gas prices and that does in, uh, affect consumer goods and that was supposedly the number one concern over in the surveys. Again, this is aggregated over the last seven days and this does not necessarily mean that 1.9 million people are talking about it. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. These are just the words that did come out that uh, went into our algorithm yeah. that allowed us to identify whether or not it was a religious vote issue here it's but again just a snapshot uh, absolutely a, a snapshot in time especially in the last seven days just like the surveys are in and, their own and way specifically it's a snapshot of social media yes uh, which uh, which is not always uh, might, might not always be reflective i suppose of uh, yeah. the general population mm -hmm. yeah i mean th i think there's a lot of discussion now about surveys google trends and all of that but let's not forget i mean a lot of these are just a reflection of interest in a specific topic, right? It interest, doesn't necessarily yes. say how you vote. It's not yeah. sentiment. Exactly. I mean, engagement is not necessarily preference. Those two things are very, very different things. Mm. They may overlap at a certain level. There's some overlap there, but not totally. So. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, this is a big, big issue. And, and you know, what, the other thing I want to watch is, I, we don't have that in our data, but TikTok. You know, maybe I'm, yes. I'm, I'm reading too much into it, but my sense is there's something about TikTok that could have a significant effect in these elections. Yes, I've seen the pulsation survey saying Facebook is still more important. It's almost at the level of radio. I get it. But but the, the point is TikTok only needs how many seconds? 30 seconds? Short. And boom, it can, it, yeah, it can have the kind of impact that perhaps it will take us 20 minutes on Facebook to get, yeah. right? So we have to have more qualitative study of how TikTok is shifting the dynamics of the social media wars that we're seeing right now. It's a, it's a, it's a totally different world that I just began to, to analyze over the past few, few yeah, months. For example, I, I see a lot of myself on TikTok, but it's not positive. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, TikTok is so easy to get like suddenly a million engagement. It's very hard to get on Facebook, but you can post the most you know, preposterous things and the next thing you know, you get one million engagement. The algorithm is so wild. It's, and it's so easy to get uh, followers, likes, etc. So I think it's, it, it, it will be the defining social media platform for years to come, right? And it's from our neighboring China, our friends there. So we know it's right, maybe. Well, because that's the trend, I think. Now people want to consume things fast. fast. Junk food. So, so TikTok <laughs> having 10 Junk seconds food, yeah. and you already have the information, right. whether it's true or not, fake or real. It's engaging, it's cool. That's What's cool. What does this mean to us? I mean, in terms of, uh, uh, I don't know if I should use the, the phrase meaningful engagement, right. but uh, or meaningful discussion of, of issues. Uh, right. uh, I mean, should that even be a, I mean, should I even say that? Uh, <laughs> Gian, you're not as crazy on social media like me, but what is your thing? I want to see what Gian has to say on social media. Well, uh, I really cannot, uh, <laughs> sorry, but I really cannot comment on this because <laughs> uh, I'm not, I've, I've not been analyzing uh, social media trends and um, siguro mas expert si, ano, si Richard when it comes to social media analysis. Richard. I'm, I'm a vlogger uh, now. Vlogger. That's, that's I, I bring that up because uh, we, we have seen the evolution of uh, of behavior. Uh, I right. don't I don't want to see I don't want to say to, towards which way. Right. But we've had the mainstream media, and then we've had the, uh, Facebook, uh, we've had Twitter, and now we've had TikTok, or we have TikTok. Uh, I I don't I don't want to say if that's a if that's a development or a, or a regression. Right. Uh, I'd like to leave that to you. <laughs> right. I mean, that's the pluralization of, of, of the information space, right? But what you can have sometimes is what you call authoritarian pluralization. So you have more voices, 
But the more and more voices are pushing towards a more kind of authoritarian, illiberal language. That can happen. So, because people always assume the more voices necessarily means more inclusiveness, more positivity. But sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work that way. And sometimes we know it's actually inauthentic, inauthentic coordinated behavior that Correct. also dictates Correct. what happens online. We have, we have been seeing Facebook flagging a lot of accounts. Mm -hmm. Some of them even based abroad. I mean, this is the other thing, Ed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we know in the European elections, in the French elections, in the American Basically. elections, Russian disinformation was a big issue, or alleged Russian disinformation. Uh, I was based in Taiwan in 2019 for a year as a visiting scholar. Chinese disinformation was a big issue. In the Philippines, I don't think we even know what's going on. This is an open system. That's why I was Many superpowers and have interest on who becomes the next president, and yet mm -hmm. we don't have an oversight. I mean, Senator should know that. He was a defense secretary. You, you know where I'm coming from, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, worried I'm, about this. I'm, I'm sorry I cut you there. Personally, yeah, if I get something bad, there is a, bad, a serious negative comment on uh, Facebook or uh, the social media. I know I'm blaming only my mother. <laughs> <laughs> the only enemy I have. So grab it on Google to Senator, kayo po ba nagti-tiktok kayo? I don't tiktok. <laughs> no, but what's interesting, I was about to say... Alam ni sir, yung tiktok to, yung ginagano-gano na extra zero. Okay, right. so we see trends. We see, okay, I would call it somehow, you know, noise, di ba? On social right. media, talagang right. it's flooding, it's everywhere, it's trending. But if this is not converted to votes, right. then it doesn't mean nothing. Right, so, I mean, it's always a distinction between noise and signal, right? What is noise? What is just temporary, transient, pampagulo? What is signal? Long-term trend lines, right. right? Shift in the landscape. But let me make this argument. Sometimes the noise itself creates a new trend line. Mm -hmm. For instance, it's so hard to have rational discourse and conversation nowadays on social media, right? Well, up in five minutes, if you're doing a video, the trolls will come in and that will affect, right, the, the direction. And let's be honest. A lot of us who are also active on social media, we tend to present facts differently because you are not going to get engagement if you do it in a boring way, right? So I think this is mm. the problem. The quality of communication is also shifting. The, so that's why sometimes quality, quantity is quality. Right. When you have so much noise, it affects how people even present themselves because you cannot do it in the old ways, right? I know this stuff because I do Facebook Live, I do all, and I see within two minutes I already have trolls, etc. So you have to do it differently. You, you cannot do it in the scripted, clean way. You have to be engaging, you right. have to be kalog, the alaskador the event bits, sometimes. Diba? You know, right. So it would be very interesting to find out, like after these elections, on how again social media would come to play as to actually bring in people in the voting precincts and affecting their decision. Paolo, I think, has more um, right. more uh, data for us. Well, again, unfortunately, we do not have data from TikTok, and you're, you're right. Yeah, I'm so say, sorry for giving No, no, <laughs> absolutely. He's absolutely right in terms of uh, being curious on just how it is affecting mm. this particular election cycle. In fact, there have been a lot of reports from international media taking a look at how TikTok is used to either inform or disinform a certain, the, the voting populace. So that'll be interesting to look at. But if we look here, now, if you feel feel that social media is a bit more negative than positive when it comes to election mm. season, you're not the only one. Because as you can see here, we actually have a chart here on just how, how negative and positive uh, social media comments are in general. And right over here, negative being a far leader here in terms of uh, the amount of social media engagement, social media uh, being consumed is right now. Again, this is on Facebook, Paolo, Twitter, and Instagram. All, that's, that's not for a specific candidate. Yes, that's uh, not the, for a specific the, candidate. The that's in the negative, uh, right, it's just yeah, that, that is for everyone in general. For Again, so for those wondering if there is more negative sentiment on social media right. and seeing all of that, you're not wrong based on what we have here at the moment. Now, we can actually go to specific candidates in particular. Again, we have to be careful about what you talk about engagement. How can we change this into votes? That's going to be the question here. And of course, right now with our algorithm, we have assigned words to be either positive or negative. And this has been shifting all throughout the day. Earlier this morning, uh, Mayor Escomoreno was actually the top getter in terms of engagement on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. But as the day progressed, the two survey frontrunners, DP Lenny Robredo and former Senator Bongbong Marcos, have suddenly started to take control in a very big way. Almost 120,000 engagements in between both Escomoreno and former Senator Bongbong Marcos and of course DP Lenny Robredo up top there as well. We also see the change in the negative comments and the positive comments. So right over here, red means negative and blue means positive. Throughout earlier the day, VP Lenny Robredo was flooded with 
very negative comments uh, earlier this morning, but that has suddenly shifted. And on the other end, former center Bongbong Marcos now receiving more negative comments as opposed to positive ones. This was the reverse earlier just a while ago. Now, we talk about how social media is very reactory and how social media is very fluid in terms of direction. It's hard to say that any of this will affect how the voters will vote or is an indicator of how they will vote. But then this is a great way to look at the puzzle of people at the moment, a snapshot in time, if you will, Ed. Okay, excellent presentation from Paolo. 